Welcome to our weekly look behind the scenes of Star Citizen's development. I'm Jared Huckabee. Now, building the Persistent Universe is a collaborative experience, not just between the developers here, but with you, the Star Citizen community. And on this week's show, we have two segments that highlight the ways your feedback can influence the course and direction of development. Let's go to Dave and Rich to learn more about how you helped bring the new flight experience to life. I think it would be really nice being sort of, being aware that we're imperfect and we're learning from the community. Like he's trying to catch the candid moments as well now. Yeah. What, what are you doing? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> huh? He learned from last time. Yeah. Well, it's to get that thing take when we're, uh, yeah. You guys are too savvy. <laughs> too savvy, you see. So in 3.5, we're releasing this new flat model, uh, which is kind of a re-evaluation of the core flat mechanics of Star Citizen. We've got like technical re-evaluation to make it more stable and better, easier to maintain in the future. And we've also kind of looked hard at the design and tried to get it back to the vision that we really want out of this game. And that process of kind of bringing that new flat model to release has been a super eye-opening experience for us to kind of learn about the community. I mean, that whole process kind of started around CitizenCon. That was quite a while ago now. Yeah. So where were we at CitizenCon? So we're at CitizenCon. And we were like... It was the first time the new flat model had ever been seen. We'd not really had any player feedback at yeah. that point. So it's more about core feedback about how the flight model has changed and... Yeah, we, we got most of our interesting feedback when we actually went to Avocadi for 3.5. Um, and that was a really eye-opening experience for us. We'd done loads of testing, obviously, up until that point, but uh, we made a lot of changes uh, since then. Like, one of the big obvious ones is we retuned a lot of the ships several times over the course of Avocadi Rush. Yeah, we went back, but I think it's fair to say we probably didn't understand the combat as much as we do now. So it didn't hit the targets that you know we were aiming for. So we started creeping up based on the feedback, and we kept creeping up just very small amounts, and it just wasn't enough. But then we decided just to go make a big leap. I'd say we hit much closer to what the community wanted, but I'd say we're not quite there yet. But I think we're getting closer to what the community wanted from that. We've also learned how the accelerations of ships kind of interact with the rest of the, the tuning for ships. And a big thing that we've learned is that you can't tune accelerations in isolation from the velocities of ships. And hopefully, all of this will kind of work together so that we can, we can have this more focused vision. Um, and with the player's help, we've kind of learned what that vision is. And so in future releases, um, I think they're gonna benefit a lot from this process. Um, and obviously, we'll continue interacting with, with players on Spectrum and getting more and more information, and I think if we were able to uh, focus our vision and communicate that vision, um, we can make the quality of that feedback and that relationship with players even better. And that's kind of the goal that we're gonna go forward with. I got a sitcom, we're gonna have to challenge them. <laughs> oh my God, I didn't know who that was. There was an additional pair of hands that shouldn't have been there. A major component of Agile development in Star Citizen is the use of production sprints. These are tiny microcosms of the overall development of the game where we can produce a theory, build the experiment, and then test and review before starting that process all over again. It's a great way to ensure a development team doesn't spend a whole bunch of time working on a thing before finding out it either doesn't work or is no longer needed. It's also the thing that makes our quarterly release schedule possible. So, yay for that. To that end, we thought it'd be cool to occasionally present some of the smaller, more incremental achievements across Star Citizen's development. Things that have either already had a feature recently and have continued to evolve, or stuff that's probably going to have a feature later on down the line, but we're not quite there just yet. So this week, we present to you the Sprint Report. The character art team recently completed a sprint on concepts for new clothing manufacturer called ELD. The intention here, to inject color into the lives of some of Microtech's more extroverted residents. The team is also exploring the potential for animated or glowing textures, and how that could potentially be utilized in some of these clothing options. While it's too early to say what may actually make the cut, this sprint, like many for concept artists, was about exploring the realm of possibilities within Star Citizen. The FPS weapons team completed their explorations of the Apocalypse Arms Animus Missile Launcher, which, let's just be super honest here, looks as mean as it sounds. I mean, the word Animus literally means hostility. 
so don't point one at anyone you like and expect them to be okay with it. Now, if you checked out our most recent monthly report on the RSI website, you may have noticed the work of our environment art team to improve the ways we can better scale the natural features of our planets and moons by exploring the limits of our existing tech, shown here in recent tests on canyons. This is super exciting because while Star Citizen is often about exploring new and experimental technologies, it can be just as important to continue iterating on the tools we've already created to make them both as efficient and capable as they can be. It's just one more way to make sure we're getting the most out of every development milestone possible. And finally, for this episode's Sprint Report, we've got a follow-up to last week's feature on the Vanguard interiors. We've started work on redeveloping the exterior for the ship with the intention of hewing a bit closer to the original concept. Rest assured, we'll be checking in with the rest of the Vanguard rework before the end of this quarter. And that's it for the Sprint Report, but there's more inside Star Citizen to come. In fact, this week we're going to take a look at an aspect of Star Citizen's development we've never explored on show before, how we gather, collect, and organize the game-related feedback you all put out into the world and make sure it gets into the right developer's hands. <laughs> uh, to tell us more about this process, you got my mouth. Let's go to Michael Smith and find out more. Take him, take him. So we have an entire reporting process which is dedicated to player feedback. What that means is we take the information players are giving us on what parts of the game they find not fun, we're compiling that information and we're giving it to developers in such a way that they can easily action on it. Additionally, we'll actually create feedback threads and just monitor the conversation. We're looking for topics that come up repeatedly, for things that players are agreeing on, just any kind of issue like that. And that gives us a kind of baseline to sort of look for. That is still subjective, so we try to support that with in-game analytics and with player feedback surveys. The surveys allow us to kind of take a deeper dive into what players are saying, kind of quantify their feedback a little bit, and also look at the proportion of players who are saying one thing versus another thing and why they might disagree. And the internal analytics allows us to look at things like ship balance or weapon balance to get an idea of what the experience is like in-game. We can compile all of that information and we can put it together in issues to be able to present that to directors. Now, we're doing this all of the time, but it's especially active during PTU cycles and right after a major quarterly release when we have a bunch of feedback threads and a bunch of surveys that go out, which is all about keeping our finger on the pulse of the game and being able to get an idea of what the experience is like, what's working, what's not working, and figure out how we can move on from there. It's the Defender. It's the staple ship of the Banu race. It is their primary fighter. It's a very quick, nimble, agile, and deadly ship. It's mass produced. It's produced so much, in fact, that they sell them off to the other races in the galaxy. The Defender is going to be the first Banu ship released. The entire interior is a completely new pipeline that I've ever attempted to do. Lots of organics, flowing shapes. I've had to learn how to model in different ways to get this ship to be what it's supposed to be. It's going to be the newest thing that anyone's ever seen when it comes out. All the materials, all the shape language, the art, the motif, everything had to be done from scratch, unlike my previous ships. So not only am I creating the Banu Defender, I'm also creating a Banu art tile set for future Banu ships that other artists are gonna have to use. Because I'm making new materials, I can't wait to show you guys some of the new alien materials now that the rules have been lifted a little bit on what type of materials I can use. I get to have a little bit of fun with what this ship is constructed out of and the deco, how it's going to look, the lighting. We're still in the exploratory stage. We're still dialing it in. I'm getting a lot of feedback from our directors and colleagues. It's being pushed and guided into the Star Citizen universe so that the next Banner ship in the pipeline uh, will be able to follow along with the art that I've created thus far. So this is still a whip. Jump on Spectrum, uh, let me know what you think. 
So we're here with Elwyn from the ship team. Elwyn, we just saw the Banner Defender. Uh, we know folks have been waiting for the ship for a while. Tell us how it's doing. Uh, where are we at? So we actually have a handful of artists now currently working on that ship to try and bring it, bring it together. But there is a ton of work that has to go into the ship. The important thing for us is that we make sure that we establish a set of materials and textures and sort of shape language on the interior of the ships. We want to make sure that when we do that, it looks great and it's, uh, it's something that we can carry forward. I'm glad we're taking the time to make sure we do it right. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. All right, so what did we learn this week? We learned that spaceflight is whatever you make of it. Making Star Citizen is both a sprint and a marathon. Player feedback is a powerful tool to inform development. The Banu, doo-doo, the ship do that you two, and I really thought I could get through an episode without saying something silly or stupid. So close. <laughs> we'll see you next week, everybody. What are you doing here? There's a free fly going on. There's ships to fly for free. Go. We'll be back next week. Thanks for watching. For the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42, you can subscribe to our channel or you can check out some of the other shows. And you can also head to our website at www.robertsspaceindustries.com. Thank you very much for watching.